That's right, NFL, you should be scared. Here he comes. I love a good hype video for a great prospect. Our next guest named first team all Big 12, second team all American, team captain uh, for his final year at Houston, a dominant offensive tackle for those Cougars. He's born and raised H Town kid through and through. Patrick Paul, happy we fixed your camera. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How are you enjoying these interviews? There's a lot of Zooms, a lot of in person. Like, does it excite you and energize you, or are you a little more introverted and it sort of exhausts you? It, it, it excites me, definitely. I enjoy doing this, and it's part of the process, so it's been amazing. Can you believe there's like 10 days left until the draft? I know. It's coming up quick. <laughs> I know. It's about to be here. What are you most looking forward to? Um, you know, I'm really looking forward to getting into a room, you know, whatever team drafts me, wherever that is, to just get in there and get familiar with the players, get familiar with the coaches, and just start my journey. Well, let's get familiar with Patrick Paul. You led all tackles in the entire country with a PFF 91.5 pass block grade this year. You allowed one quarterback hit in 469 opportunities, just one. You went 9 of 12 games without allowing even a hurry. What was the key to your dominance this year? I'd say just great coaching. I know uh, I was in a great room this year with a whole bunch of offensive linemen that, you know, we just all had the same goal to get after it. So I just say having that consistent mindset where you're just going to go out there and no one's going to touch my quarterback. So constantly having that mindset and just consistently going out there and putting my best foot forward. Yeah, and, and talking to you even just for a couple of minutes and, you know, getting our research in order for you to introduce you to people in the NFL here on this platform, you really, you seem very zen peaceful, woosa kind of guy. And then I see this quote from you, okay? Let's take a look here. I don't think you have to have a nasty side to be a good offensive lineman, but I do. I feel like that's the way the game should be played. You've got to be nasty with it. What, what does this mean? What do you mean? What, do you, what does this mean? What do I need to know about you in the NFL? I'm a tenacious player, you know, uh, off the field. You know, I'm going to be nice, calm, zen, a nice guy. But, I mean, when you're out there on those lines, you got to turn it on. you got to be nasty with it. And that was the way I was taught to play football, especially offensive lines, though. You just have to be nasty with it. And when I go out there, I'm tenacious, and I'm, that's how I have fun with it. What does it do to you when you hear some, some people or entities or whatever refer to you as a project? What does that do to you? It motivates me, you know. I, I don't really try to hear all the outside noise because I know what I know what my mindset's going to be whenever I get to a team. So, you know, you know, it doesn't. It's not the best thing to hear, but being a young rookie, it is a project. Everyone's going to be a project. So wherever I go, I'm just going to put my best foot forward. And I'm going to work. I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to work. And what is the potential? What circle. is the potential for you that you feel like maybe ha hasn't been tapped into yet? I think just finding that maturity of the game, I feel like the position of offensive line, it's an art. So with that, every year you just perfect your art. You know, you see guys like Trent Williams, he's perfected his art, so it takes time. So with that, I think just working each year to become better and fine tuning those little mm. details in your game, yeah, that's what it's gonna be, so. Who's your Picasso? Who's your Basquiat? Who's doing it the right way in the art of the offensive line? Uh, throw, you know, I throw shouts out to, you know, Lane Johnson's of the game, Trent Williams of the games, Tyron Smith's of the games. Those People are that bad have been doing boys, their... though. That's Trent's an you, angry, they... <laughs> bad, tenacious boy. Woo! I'm telling you, they've been doing it at such a high level for such a long time. So they've truly perfected their craft. So one of, uh, you're talking about motivation, and I'm glad that that motivates you. It should. And one of the other motivators sort of to you personally is your older brother, Chris. <laughs> who's got a nice spot on the commander's O-line, okay? Two years older than you, just two years. How has watch, watching him sort of helped you uh, get to your next levels? Uh, definitely. It's been motivating, you know? He's been there every step of the way with me, and just seeing him in that position, it's motivating. It's, I'm proud of him, and it's been great to see his journey through this, but it's also given me a firsthand look of what it's going to take and what the whole process is like, so it's been a blessing. Uh, any pointers he's given you on this whole process? Well, you know, the biggest part is just to be yourself. Have fun with it. You know, enjoy the little things and enjoy the tough things that you have to go through during this process. It's all gonna, it's all gonna come to fruition when you end up on a great team. You have the same representation. We love Rock Nation. Congrats on working with them. Great group there. Uh, and you have said that it would be a blessing if you got the opportunity to play with your brother in Washington. And even the commander's official Twitter account tweeted this mock draft. Hey, you're on it. Uh, how would you feel about a reunion on the horizon? 
It would be a blessing. Uh, it would be a full circle moment right there. And, uh, you know, we'll see what draft night holds, but it's definitely possible. Uh, we can't forget your allegiance to Houston now. We've got to talk about this as we're getting to know you. Born and raised, committed to Houston to stay close to home. You've called Houston your sanctuary. Uh, the Texans can't not love what they're doing right now from last year to this offseason. I know you had a meeting with them. Uh, how did that meeting go? And what, when, when I asked that, how did it stick out from other conversations and meetings you've had? Uh, it was a good meeting with the Texans. Uh, it was uh, very familiar. You know, I'm from Houston, originally born and raised, so I cheer on the Texans team. So it was very good to go out there and talk to them. And, you know, <laughs> we'll see. What is we'll that, sm as far as the what is that smile? What do you mean? What, why are you, what, what makes you smile about it? Uh, you know, that's just my team. So, you know, you never know how draft night's going to be, but we'll see. So how does that feel when you are going in and meeting with the team that you grew up cheering for? Like, what is that? I'll never know what that's like. You got to help me out, Patrick. What is that like? It's a surreal moment. So growing up, I cheered for the Cowboys and the Texans. So meeting with both of them was good. It's like a childhood dream just come true. Uh, a little more nervous or a little more like... I'd say it wasn't really nervous. It's yeah. kind of like a full circle moment. In that moment, I was just excited. I was just happy, smiling cheek to cheek, just because I was like, hey, I'm in here with my team. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice politically stuff. correct answer. And I find that interesting, because if you weren't headed to the NFL, I hear, is this true that you would want to be a politician, fathering your grandfather's steps? Yes, that's what I want to do later down the line. And wow. after my football career is over, you know, I want to get into that. But Tell me about your you grandfather. Know, just, what is the connection to politics? Um, so he was one of the, if not the first president of Nigeria. So with that, um, he just paved the way for the nation and he worked his way up working in England with the queen and then just kept going. And then he took over the Nigerian army, which made him head of staff and the president. So, oh my goodness. And so, and now he, in so politics sort of, uh, and leadership run in your veins, it sounds like. It's in the blood, for it's sure. In, okay. It's in the blood. Well, then let's get on a bit of a soapbox here. You're on camera. You, you're you're doing a great job here. Why don't you, you, you know, get on your political soapbox and, and tell the NFL GMs what they're getting when they draft Patrick Paul? Uh, I tell the NFL GMs, whoever may be watching, if you draft me, you're going to get a player who's going to be the same person every day. You're going to get a person who comes in every day and he's ready to work, someone who's going to be a great teammate, a great leader, and someone who's just going to be a dependable franchise tackle for you. So... Woo! Can't wait to see where you go in the NFL. Hopefully, I mean, I'm, I got my fingers crossed for Texans, Cowboys, but you'll, you, at some point, I have no doubt that you'll eventually be on one of those teams at some point in your long, prolific NFL career. Um, by the way, my producer wanted to make sure I asked you this. Please tell me that's you on the field during this very unfortunate, was this, do you know this moment, this memorable <laughs> throw up moment this season? What is this? Uh, this is our right tackle, Ruben. Yeah, so. <laughs> We're about to snap the ball, and I just glance over, and I mean, there's just puke everywhere. I didn't see it in the moment, but when I glanced over, I was like, huh, how did this end up here? I didn't know it was him until we got to the sideline, so that was uh, definitely funny. That was a funny moment right there. What kind of teammate are you, Patrick? I'm a great teammate, I'd say. I'm a good leader, you know, someone that anyone could come up to and talk to, no matter what position you are. You can come and chop it up with me, and yeah. If, you, if you're at a party and that happens with Ruben, are you helping clean it up? Are you taking, are you driving him home? What are we, what kind of, what kind of, what are you made of? <laughs> I don't think I'd clean it up, but I'd definitely take him home. I'm definitely <laughs> making sure he gets back home and gets to sleep. <laughs> You'd help him you out. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Paul coming to an NFL team near you. Good luck at the draft. Enjoy it. It's almost here, 10 days away, and we are rooting for you.